Good morning. I want to thank um, Heritage Education Network Belize and its director for organizing this culture symposium, which I find to be delightfully well organized and a much needed outlet for Belizean heritage practitioner to spread and preserve their knowledge. Music and language are universal features of human society. Both of these communication systems involve gestures and body movement. Music is even said to be the language of emotion. Music is meant to be shared as soon as someone made a sound, that sound is already traveling and thus heard by someone else. As such, the earliest human in what is today the land of Belize must have already been making music. It could be as simple as banging two sticks together one could make a sound and then by continuously making that sound in a rhythmic manner one could be making music although we have no evidence of paleo people making music we can deduce that they must have been as music is life however percussion wind instrument made from perishable materials did not preserve well in the wet and humid environment of Central America. While music instruments made from, of fire clay, basically ceramic, have been excavated throughout the Maya region, the earliest in the archaeological record of are ceramic vessel flutes or ocarinas that were excavated from the site of Quail, Black Man Eddy, and baking pot, dating to the Middle Pre-Classic period. This meant that the ancient Maya of Belize were the earliest to be making music in the entire Maya region. As such, ancient Belizean have been grooving on music long before everybody else. The kinds of sound producing instrument used by the ancient Maya can be made from perishable plant materials like gourds, hollow out logs and other wooden materials um, and or they could be made from non-perishable materials like fire clay, bones, shells and from metal um, like copper, particularly copper. Some of the perishable music instruments are turtle shell which can be banged with a wooden stick and most likely, um, yeah, they use a deer antler as depicted in murals and vases. Bone rafts or rasper is a type of instrument where there are grooves carved on a long bone, typically human and sometimes human skulls, uh, but also jaw bones of deer, uh, of deer as well. Um, some are produced by running stick across it. So this is a wooden frog, and there's some um, you know ridges groove on above it, and this is a stick. I'm gonna show you how it works. So and this is how it looks like um, on long bones. So they just craft the groove there. Flutes are typically made of long bones as well, or from wooden material like this. This is wood. This is a foot. Rattles can be made from fire clay or gourds with seeds and small pebble placed inside. So this is rattle. Um, on the murals of Bonham Park, we could see depictions of such rattle, as well as trumpets and drums. Trumpets could be made from wooden materials as well, um, but also uh, typically um, conch shells, so conch trumpet. I don't have a conch shell. I, mean, I don't have a conch trumpet, <laughs> sorry. Where else? Drums are typically made from wood with skin, with a skin scratch across forming a sound producing membrane. 
in addition to this, the ancient Maya also have um, also used ceramic pedestal drum or hand drums that are held by gripping um, between um, the person's body and arm, and then you know use the other hand to bang on it. So you can. This is uh, this is not a pedestal drum. Um, so another unique instrument is the tungkul. This is a tungkul, uh, or a slip drum, because um, basically it's a hollow out uh, tree trunk, and with slit half in it, and then you hit it with a stick to produce a uh, sound. Um, this is actually a uh, bamboo, so like so. Copper bells are also common and perhaps worn on the ankles and during dancing, um, the sound is produced. Um, perhaps they also wear it on their arm and then when they dance, um, sound, is, sound is produced. By far, the largest type of musical instrument artifact in the archaeological records are made of ceramic, like so. These include vessel flute like ocarinas, whistles, tubular duck flutes, drums, bells, rattles, composite type instrument like a tubular vessel flute uh, rattle hybrid which have been found at Pakbitun, Belize. Uh, two of them actually. So um, when I say tubular duck flute, it's just a typical flute. So you know, tubular. And then a vessel flute is usually uh, either an ocarina or whistle. So this is an ocarina. Um, so this body here, the round body, is a resonating chamber. It's also, you know, by definition, a whistle. Um, so a whistle is just the mouthpiece and then an exit hole. And it only produces one note. <laughs> Sorry. Um, an ocarina um, has a mouthpiece, an exit hole, and then there's also finger holes, uh, various finger holes, and it produces different notes and sound. Uh, oh, forgot about the uh, Wessel Rattle Hybrid. So at Pak Bitun, we have two of these uh, Wessel Rattle Hybrid. So this is the flute part with the finger holes. And then this is the rattle part. So imagine a flute and a rattle hybrid. So you could use it like a wind instrument or shake it like a rattle. Ancient cultures in the Americas use music for both religious and social reasons. Um, this music, um, probably are reinforced with vocal sounds or dancing. Vocal sounds like, you know, singing and dancing. It is likely that the ancient Maya entertained themselves with music. Beyond this realm, however, the ancient Maya may have used music to entertain their gods and deities. Procession are an important part of life among the ancient Maya, especially for the ruling elite. This is because a procession is a moving performance for both the gods and the public. So, you know, the elites have to impress, put on a big show, uh, you know, a nice show um, for the gods above and for the uh, gods below, and also for the public, for the people. From depiction on vase and murals, we know that the Maya ball game also involved music and musicians. Ritual auto-sacrifice auto or self-bloodletting uh, have been depicted with the individual naked uh, with a perforated penis and blowing a shell trumpet at the same time. Uh, perhaps to call on the gods to let the gods know what he is doing. Um, from Pak Bitun, we know that music instruments were involved in funerals as this instrument were possibly used in the funeral procession and then buried with the deceased. Scenes of hunters with music instruments indicate that it is also used in hunting. 
um, usually they are little well uh, conch shells, um, probably some kind of trumpet um, or whistle. Um, perhaps they're hunting with dogs. Um, I haven't figured out how to hunt with musical instrument. Stay tuned. Although we only have scenes depicting men with musical instrument, however, at Pakpitun, each of the burials with ocarinas and tubular uh, flute rattle hybrid uh, were that of female individuals. At Aguateca in Guatemala, or ocarinas are found in the kitchen storage area, which meant women and children are the most likely users of this instrument. It is worth noting that the scenes from mirrors and vases are typical of those rituals and of public events as well as other male dominated activities like bloodletting and hunting. Soundscape is the totality of all the sound present in a given environment and how they interact within that particular environment. The reconstruction of the soundscape of an ancient city like Pakpitun will depend on a good contextual information in the form of the preservation of architecture, the clear understanding of the internal spatial arrangement of such structures at a given time period, as well as the recovery of music instrument. As this component creates intentionally desired type of sound play by that culture in that location during that time period. At Park Bitun, archaeological investigation have been ongoing for almost four decades, which meant that Park Bitun Central, Park Bitun Central Precinct is well understood, with all of its 42 structures located and precisely mapped. Additionally, a sizable quantity of music instruments were recovered. As a result, a combination of these factors, the postulation of soundscape at Park Bitun during the late classic to terminal classic period is conceivable. Although the female burials from Pakpitun were all excavated from restricted access courtyards and Pozuela, both of them, uh, both types are domestic, the nature of music is that it can be heard even from, even from behind a hidden courtyard or at a restricted access Pozuela. Music and sound at Pakpitun, Pakpitun though produced in hidden restricted access courtyard and quazillas, could still be heard in the public areas of the central precinct. Thus, the, sound, the soundscape of Pakpitun would have been a mixture of not only music and sound produced during rituals, rituals ceremonies, and procession by elite men blowing trumpets and beating drums, but also sound, music and sound made by elite women using their rattles ocarinas, flutes, in the restricted access courtyard and in, in their restricted access courtyard in Pozuela, all accompanied by the noises of a busy open air market in Plaza B, as well as the noises of activities like wood chopping, um, children playing, a mason's hammer, busily shaping stones for construction. And encompassing all these layers of sound is the ever-present sound of the rainforest, such as the howling from male howler monkeys, the chirping of various species of birds, the rustle of leaves and corn stalks, the pesky sound of mosquitoes, the sound of rainfall, and, the run and running water. This is the sound of a vibrant ancient Maya city-state, not unlike the sound at the busy marketplace next to the bus terminal in Belmopan today. Um, thank you.